Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. It is time for the word. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, somebody. Let us bow our head as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory. We thank you because this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I pray that even as I speak, I will not speak of my own accord, but I will speak of your own accord in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, take hold of my mouth. Let me be a mouthpiece in your hands in the name of Jesus. Don't let me speak of my own accord. Only let me say that which you sent me to say in the name of Jesus. Open the heart of your children right now, and as they begin to hear, help them not only be the hear of your word, but also the hair and the door of your words and I pray that you interpret everything that I'm going to say to your children break it down to them in a way that break it down to each and every one of us in a way that we can understand and fully comprehend and begin to practice Lord in Jesus name I prayed Amen. Amen we give God the glory for a day like this we thank God regardless of whatever is going on God is still on the throne and he's still in the business of doing miracles he's still in the business of healing and he's still in the business of saving he's a 24 7 God he does not take any break he does not take any lunch break he does not take any in time breaks in between but he constantly walks watching over us keeping watch over us praise God Hallelujah. This month, the month, um, the theme for this month is Hitch Free Marriage is God's Plan for Me. Please, if you could repeat after me. Hitch Free Hitch Marriage, free marriage is God's Plan God's for Me. And our anchor scripture is taken from Genesis 2, 21 to 25. Um, we started with the power of singleness. And that the anchor scripture was taken from 1 Corinthians 7, 7. And basically that was letting us know that your single years is not a wasted year it is not it is not a celebration of loneliness but it is a time for us to it's a time for us rather to celebrate of what god is doing in our life it's a time for us to be sold out to christ not that when you get married you're not going to be sold out to christ you're still going to be sold out to christ but then you're going to have other things take contending for your attention as well so that was what we we're talking about in the so um so your, be sold out for Christ in your single years. Praise God. Amen. The power of togetherness. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. And you agree with me that if two, the Bible also talks about it, if two, um, uh, can two, can two agree if they, if they can two, um, walk together. walk together. Thank you. Can two walk together three. unless they agree? You must three, three. So they can't walk together unless they agree. So marriage is all about working together and coming together to achieve a common goal. The, and today we're going to be talking about the power and purpose of wives. The power and purpose of wives. And the anchor scripture is taken from Ephesians 5, 22 to 23. And I'll read it. Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. His body of which, is, of which he is the savior. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So where did the story, even before I drive into the power of wife, this is just for single sisters. If you're watching us online and you're just, and you're, if you're listening to this message or you're watching this message at a different time, I just want to say that if you're a single out there, the first rule of thumb is that if you are not going, don't marry a man that you will never submit to. Don't marry a man that you cannot submit to. Don't marry a man that you don't even have intention of submitting to. If you know that you're not going to submit to that man, don't marry him. And in the next few minutes that I'm going to be spending here, you would, you would see the reason why I said so. As a single sister, I made it a, a point of duty to... I, I pray and then I, sometimes I find that we get too spiritual about things. We get overly spiritual about what God has given us a bit of leeway to. As a Christian sister, I knew that I was not good. I, if I, I can't marry somebody that is younger than me. Not that it's wrong. Don't get me wrong. No. But I know that I would not fully be able to respect that man if I find out that. It, it doesn't matter. As a single sister, if I find out that you're old, that you're younger than me, it doesn't matter if you drop a life gorgeous. I will not go for you. I will not even consider you. You will not even be. I will not even bother going on my news concerning you. So what am I saying? Single, this is just an 
a, a rule of thumb to single sisters out there don't marry a man that you know that you would not respect praise god okay. where did the story begin genesis 2 20 to 21 let us open our bibles to genesis 2 20 to 21 Genesis chapter 2 from verse 20. And the man gave names to all um, livestock and to the brides of the air, and to the birds, sorry, excuse me, and to the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper that was suitable, a companion for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place and the reed which the lord god had taken from the man he made fashioned form into a woman and he brought her and presented her to man then adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she has been she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man so what am i trying to say with that as we all know the whole story as women we are as wives and first of all let me start with the definition of wife the, what does the what is the bible definition of wife the bible definition of wife is a woman married to a man not a woman married to a woman no it is it is neither a man married to another man it is a woman the definition of wife is a woman married to a man so because the the, the world that we live in today seems to have it a little bit mixed up but thank god be the body of christ we know what the word of God says about it. Amen. Amen. So where the story begins, we God has created us to be the helpmate for the man, which means like my husband once said that the man was put in the garden. He knows how to tend the garden. He knows what to do, but we are a helper, which means what we know how to do. The man is only also knows how to do it himself. Praise the Lord. Okay. So if you're going to, if you're considered a helpmate, that means you need to do it in a way you are helping the person that you are helping you need to do it and fashion it in the way they would like in the way they would want which means that sometimes it may not be in the way you like it it may not but see if you put yourself in a place that you are helping this person then you wouldn't want to encroach into their personal space you want to do it the way they like someone and basically today i'm going to be touching on there are our scriptures mm -hmm. from ephesians 5 22 to 23 and the and from that verse, I'm basically going to focus on submission. Submission is a hot topic. People don't want to talk about it today. I'm all for women empowerment, but when it gets to the stage whereby you start belittling a man, and then you start talking about how men don't have, they can't rule over you, or in your own home, I'm saying to be to be precise, in your house, when you when it gets to the point whereby men cannot rule over you, they can't talk, they can't um, talk about you, or they can't. They, 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 they are not in charge then I, I, you will look for me in that circle and you will never find me you will look for me in that circle and you will never find me again I welcome you if you're just coming in I welcome you and the topic that I'm um, touching on today is the power and purpose of wives the power and purpose of wives and our anchor scripture is taken from Ephesians 5 22 to 23 Amen, Amen. so someone once said so like I said earlier on before I move on that I'm going to be touching on submission. It is, again, it is a hot topic. People don't like talking about it. But you and I know, and women of God out there, we know that there's this thing, there's something about submission. There is something about submission. It is huge. It is much more. And God gave me a revelation about it. And I was reading an article recently, and the woman said that, People that don't know the word of God about submission, they have a hard time about it. And even people that know the about submission about, they know about what the word of god says about submission it doesn't make it easier for them anyways in the sense that okay yes you know about it but it takes the empowerment of the holy spirit to help you to walk through this thing of submission that we're saying praise god Hallelujah. what is so what is the um, i like to delve into the dictionary meaning of submission the dictionary meaning of submission is the act of action is the action or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will or the authority of another person this implies that there is a superior and the other person is yielding there is a superior and the other person is what 
yielding. Two people cannot be driving the car at the same time. So moving down to Genesis 3.16. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16 says, To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain, you will give birth to children. Yet your desire and longing will be for your husband. And he will rule with authority over you and be responsible for you. My husband used to make a statement. I'm dealing with, I'm responsible for you, but I'm dealing with God. I'm responsible, I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with you, but I'm, um, responsible to God. I'm responsible to God. And he's dealing with me, but he goes back to report to God. Somebody also once said that if that is the case, if our husband is reporting to God concerning us, don't you think that God will ask us about submission? That got me really thinking. As women, God, on um, the final day, God will ask you, if you're married, if you're a wife, God will ask you, how have you been faithful? How have you been faithful in this thing of submission to your husband? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. God will ask you. And just I'm just going to be sharing some of the um, scriptures that God laid in my heart concerning this thing called submission. And and we'll take you from there. Amen. Amen. So the first scripture, wives, submit to your own husband, Ephesians 22, 24. Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. So, we, we, um, and Pastor also talked about this last time. He says, submit to your own husband. Your own what? Your own husband. So first of all, that what I find, and he says, okay, I'll just continue. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as as also Christ is head of the church, and he, say, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So my, as I was telling my husband a few days ago that I think this thing is said, is not, God specifically told wives what to do and he specifically told husbands what to do because he knows that these are the technical areas that it is, it, they are not the easiest, this is what I'm trying to say. And he knows that in the terms of for a woman, it's one of the difficult areas. And for the man, it's one of the difficult areas. What do I mean? He says, love your wife, right? We find men today marrying two women, three women, four women. In my own world, in my own book, I do not call that is not love. It is hard enough to love one woman, not to talk of two women at the same time, three women at the same time. I don't know how they sleep at night and I don't know how they function. But just loving one woman is enough work for a lifetime. Praise the Lord. Not to demean women or anything. No, we are wonderful species. We have our moments and all. But I'm just saying, from the woman's perspective, one woman is enough for one man. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, when God asks us to submit to our own husband, each any time God asks you to do something, there's a blessing attached to it. And when I say when the Bible talks about submission, it doesn't mean that he did. He didn't. The Bible didn't say submit when it's good, submit when it's easy, submit when you can do it. It, it didn't give us any specification. It just says submit in everything. Oh, submit in everything. And some of the revelation that God began to show me in terms of uh, in terms of submission to her husband. First of all, when a woman is about to get married, she says yes. If an offer is made to her and she says yes to the man, and when the man and, and when she agrees to marry the man, what happens? She changes her last name for that man's last name. So what has been happening before? Her name has been in, her father's name has been in, um, I mean, after her own first name. Now that she has married the man, then she has carried on the man's last name, which means that the way, this is how God interprets it to me. Let's read Exodus um, 20, 12. Follow the father and the mother that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord God has given thee. Amen. Amen. Basically, what this statement means to me for wives by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is that wives, honor your husband that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. I'll, I'll say it again. Wives, honor your husbands that your days may be long upon the land 
which the Lord your God is giving you. What I'm saying is it's hard to chew. You might be here, you might be watching us online, you might be thinking, ah, if you know how hard my husband is, you'll be telling me to support, submit to him. Like I said earlier this issue of submission is not about whether our husbands are doing the right thing or not. It's that there is something that they used to say in my work ethics that I that I that I've come to grow with. It says the customer is always right. What that statement means is that it doesn't mean that the customer will say the right things to you at, at some time. It doesn't, the customer, when it gets to a point now, with this coronavirus, I didn't know how serious it was until I got to the store yesterday trying to buy common power drives I couldn't find. Every store was told that we went to two different stores and I didn't want to start driving to the whole city to find power drives. That it was then I knew that everybody eats power drives. <laughs> it was gone. Nothing. So, what am I saying? Wives, honor, 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 um, honor your husband. Is it is not is not based on is not on the basis of okay whether you can do it or whether it is convenient or whether everything will flow. No, it's a command and and God's command is not on itself. When He tells us to do it, there's a blessing attached to it, and He will bless us in return. Like I said, wives honor your husband that your days may be long upon the earth. So, like I was saying earlier on, that when you marry that man, you take on his last name, which means the same honor that you gave to your father before you marry that man, you need to start giving it to him. Like I said, it's a hard thing, it's not easy, and it's not mean like it doesn't mean that it's not doable, it's doable. That's why we have the help of the Holy Spirit of God. Praise God. Amen. You honor that man. What you cannot do to your father before you married him, the same way when you marry that man, don't do it to your husband. There's the blessing attached to it. If you're out there, I don't know what it is that you're going through your marriage. What what I'm speaking from a woman's perspective. Yes, I'm not here to deal with. Okay, male. What about men? If you don't think about, forget what about men right now. Let's think about women. What can we do on our end? God gave me an, um, an interpretation for um, for what's it called for arguments in marriage. It says it takes two people to argue. If you're if one person is arguing, you are arguing with you, and you return and you argue with that person. Then that's when you start going back and forth at each other. But if one person talks and you keep quiet, nothing. They used to say that the power of a woman lies in the mouth. But I beg to differ in the sense that yes, we have power in our mouth, but true power lies in when a woman can just do this. It's hard. <laughs> I'll be lying to you if I tell you that it's easy. No, it is hard. The true power is not when you talk, hey, my husband, is this, is that, is this. No, I must prove my point. Anytime you want to prove your point, I can tell you that I'm always, from my experience, I can tell you that each time I try to like say how I feel about the certain, you know, instruction that my husband has given and all that, I'm the one that always bear the, the brunt of the whole thing because Holy Spirit of God will convict me and, and once I get myself, I'll just rest my case and just keep quiet a man is able to listen to you when you can just just <laughs> my husband used to say that our mouth is not only made for talking yes our power lies we can say anything on this planet as a woman we have words and we can use it and we know how to use it but the real power lies in when you can just do this quietness i think some of the reason why we get afraid as women when we can't, when we find some of the reason, one of the reasons why we find it difficult to agree is because we think the man will cheat us. The husband also used to say something. He says that when you stop, when you, when you, um, let me cheat you. I didn't, when we first, when we were first dating and all that, and I didn't understand what he was saying, but I cheat him. I said, ah, how can you cheat me? But when we got married, I fully understood what he was talking about. When he says, let me cheat you, it is not talking about him wanting to cheat you like he says it means let me have my way when you let a man have his way the man is the head you are the neck when you let him have his way you can turn to wherever you want in the sense that <laughs> in the sense that when you <laughs> this is what i'm trying to say when you let a man have his way he will end up pleasing you you not just you but your children he will end up pleasing you and your children praise god mm. just to give an example in the old place that we've been living, we've been wanting, I've been wanting to leave that place. I'm, you know, I'll constantly share with my husband, Lord, still on the topic of submission. You know, I told my husband, let us move, let us move, let us move. My husband will give me reasons why we can move. And there are valid reasons. Nothing is wrong about those reasons. But I do not want to stay with that reason. I said, let us move. I'm tired of this place. And I went away to school for a while. And all of a sudden, one day he just called me and he said, you know, they stole, they, they broke into our car. 
and but they did not steal anything. We are moving. I was so happy. Not because they broke into our car, but because he said I was moving. Imagine, I, you know, I've been talking about it, and I wish I didn't have my way. I just kept quiet about it, and I let him have his way. But when God would intervene in the whole situation, God used what what could have meant for him. God turned it around for our good. Then he made the decision that we should we should move. And then to cut the long story short, when we were, we were now looking for places, we found the place that we wanted to go. I didn't like that place. I still was ups, I was upset about the other place. I said, is that we were looking for a three bedroom. But then when we got when my husband got there, they they were having two bedroom on sale and like renting. And then he wanted to go for that. And I said, no, that's not what we are planning for. We might as well stay where we are. So again, as I was upset about the Holy Spirit ministered to me, why don't you pray to me about it? And when, as I started praying to God about it, before you know what happened again, my husband agreed. He said, okay, we are not moving there again until we eventually found a place and we are happy with the place. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So what am I saying? If I continue fussing, arguing, doing, saying things and all that, you, I will not end up with my way. Most times that I end up with things in my own, with things going my way, are the times that I've said, okay, you know what, my husband, this is what you want to do. Let's do it this way. And if it's not going my way, the best way to deal with it is on your knees. Is on your what? On your knees. If you're a woman and you and you move. Someone once said that submission is learning to talk so that God can hit your husband. Not it's like when you submit, you've done your whole part. The, God hitting your the, the husband of talking, that I mean the part of talking is that you're submissive to your husband, and then the part of where God hitting your husband is that he puts him in line to do what he's supposed to do as a man and as your husband. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. So, like I said, back to um, honoring our husbands. Back to honoring our husband. It says um, Ephesians six one to three. Let's read Ephesians three. Ephesians six one to three. That's another uh, revelation that God gave me. If you find it, you can read it. Ephesians three one to six. I mean one Ephesians six one to three. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. That is as that is that is accept their guidance and discipline as his respectives. For this is right, for obedience teaches wisdom and self-discipline. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. What does that mean to me? Again, by the interpretation of the Holy Spirit, it means to me, this is what it, this is how the Holy Spirit interpreted it to me. It says Wives, obey your husband in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your husband that it may be well with you, and you may live long on earth. Am I trying to say that all the women that died before their husband, they didn't honor their, uh, their husband? No, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that long life for a wife is tied to respecting her husband. It is a hard statement to chew, but it is the truth. Long life for a woman. It's time to honor your husband. But the same verse that says, remember I said that you've exchanged your last name for his last name. So the same honor you give to your father, you have to give to your husband. It's not an easy thing. A woman, you've been by yourself all this while, and all of a sudden you invited a man into your world. <laughs> so you have to. It's not. It's something you walk on each day. But thank God we have the Holy Spirit of God to help us. So what am I saying? Back to the issue, I've been talking basically about submission. So the whole, and submission to me is like the umbrella and everything ties to it. If you're able to submit your heart to your husband, you'll be able to help him, you'll be able to love him, you will do everything that comes together with submitting. So you can't, you can't fully, it's like your boss, it's like it's working, your uh, boss, employee, employer relationship is submission. If you don't submit to that company, you can't gain anything. You won't go to work every morning. It's because of your level of submission to their uh, to their authority. That's why you're able to clock in, clock out, do what they've told you to do. Do it's it's, it's the same it's the same um, analogy. So if you don't if you if you don't submit to that person, you can't respect that person. So what I'm saying it sounds easy, but it is not. It is not. This issue of submission, like I said once again, is a hot topic. People don't want to talk about it. Women don't want to talk about it. They want to shy away from it. 
But it is not something to be shy away from. It is something to embrace. It's not easy, yes. But like I said, we have the help of the Holy Spirit of God to help us. And that is why he, he has given us this instruction, not because he thinks it's so hard for us to do, but he knows that we can do it. And as we do it, he will bless us in it. Submission is something that I strive and that I've tried and it works. So I'm employing all women today. Like I said, if you are doing it, if you're not doing it and you think, okay, what am I, I've not started doing it, at least start from somewhere. Start doing what you've never done before. When you once are along the line, when you miss it, go back to God, ask for forgiveness. But submission is a key. Everything that I've been talking about, what is the power? The, I've been, the, today's topic, the power, the, the power and purpose of a wife. Submission. Submission. Like I said, it's a hot topic. People don't want to hear about it. But it is the very thing that we need to hear about as women and that we help us. And maybe it's a woman of God. There are still, uh, and I was by, like, like I said in the beginning, I said that she made a statement that you will give account as to how you submitted to your husband. Yeah. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't really think deep about that before. But it's, if you think that your husband is not, if our husbands are responsible to God, then we will give account how we submitted to them. What did we do when they gave us instruction? Yes, there is no only instruction that you want to do. I'll be lying to you if I said, okay, everything that my husband has said to me that yes, I was that I just went hey, and I did it like that. No. But I have to tell myself that I have the mind of Christ, and because Christ lives in me, and because He has given me an instruction, then I have to do it the way He has asked me to do it. And if it is something that I want God to touch us, then I fight on my knees. We don't use our words. The best we can do is go on your knees, pray, and your ma and your husband will turn around to what you want him to do. So let um on a final note. I want us to read um, 1 John, 1 John 5, 3. It says, for this, 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. So that's where I'm going. The power and purpose of a woman lies, of a wife, lies in, first of all, like the key thing that they say is his money is submission, and everything else ties to it. If you're able to submit to your husband, you will be able to do what he has, what God has commanded. What Ephesians, um, Ephesians 6, Ephesians 5, 22 to 23 has commanded, you will be able to do it. So God's commandments of, sub, of wives submitting to their husband is not burdensome. It is something we can do by the help of the Holy Spirit of God. And I pray that every woman that is listening to this, that if you've not been submissive to your husband, I pray that the Lord will give you everything you need to be submissive. And you've been, and if you've been submissive here and there, you if, if it is an ongoing situation, you're submissive today, you're not submissive tomorrow, that God will rectify that. And even as you've heard this, even as I've heard this, that God will touch our life and we will be the women God has called us to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for your word. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. We thank you because you're the Father that never fails. We thank you for your word that has gone forth. We ask that you help us not only be the hearer of your words, but also the hearer and the doer of your words in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, Brogonos. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We thank God that uh, coronavirus did not lock us at home. <laughs> God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time. We thank God for uh, the powerful word and uh, we pray that the hand of God will be upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Our efforts, our purpose should not be jeopardized. Our coming here today will not be wasted in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, the word has been shared. And I'm just going to say the two things, then wrap up and we we go. I wrote an article, I think, in 2012 or 2013. I, I think I was in the US when I, I came to the US then. I call it. Uh, win your word. Win your word. If you type win your word by Rotimia Lidokon, you will see it. 
And one of the things that I wrote there, I said, win your wife with love, win other ladies with respect, and win your daughter with advice, and win your mother with wisdom. I will say it again. Win your wife with love. The only thing a lady responds to in life is love. If you don't have money, you don't have anything, you don't have what she wants, if you love her, and she knows that she loves her, she's going to respond. Love is the key that 